to my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what to text a man, right? Which has never been more important than in these strange times of quarantining and social distancing. A lot of times we are at distances, we're separated from each other, right? So let's dig into texting and what a profoundly powerful tool it can be. For those of you who don't know, my name is Matt Schaefer. I'm a transformational uh, relationship, connection, and empowerment coach for women. I coach women around empowerment, connection, and relationship. I am obsessed with what I do. If you're new, say hi in the comments. We got Sophie D over here, love always, Miss Lenore Regal. So wonderful to have you. If you're new to my channel, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content and I'd love to have you as part of the tribe. And very importantly, y'all, before we dive into uh, our topic today, which is what to text a man, so I hope you have lots of questions on how to connect with and text men better, I wanna tell you a little bit about Mastery of Connection. That's my transformational love and relationship course. It's normally $2,000, but I am doing a free beta test that starts uh, April 13th, so in less than two weeks. So for you as a gift, as you, for you as a member of my tribe, you can sign up to be a free beta tester and we are gonna go deep into belief work, we're gonna go into all of the trans, uh, how to connect with men better, really how to transform your connections with men from the inside out. It, there's already been 4,000 women worldwide that have gone through this course and we'd love to have you as part of that beta test. So if you haven't taken Mastery of Connection before, uh, we have lots of students already uh, logging in, Lenore is one of them. You can go to www.masteryofconnection.com or hit the link in the description and check it out. It's free to sign up and it's gonna be an incredible experience. Get live coaching with me uh, for a whole month, <laughs> live group coaching, and that's always really, really powerful. So sign up for that. And now let's dive into this, right? So let's look at texting, right? Why is texting so important? <laughs> Why is it so important in relationship? I mean, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Texting is fundamentally found foundationally uh, a common uh, a common way that people connect and communicate in this day and age it just it just is it just is right so I want you to ask yourself what does your texting look like right now how is your texting going in your relationships right and because I want to give I want to lay out some very specific keys that you can use, some questions to ask yourself and some tips you can use. I got a whole bunch of them <laughs> on how to be more effective and more, uh, more powerful with your texting because texting can either draw a man in to you or it can push him away. Okay, so we're gonna go through that right now. So if you're in the chat, say hi. Nanelle's here, Karen is here, Mindy Slimmer is here from Kansas. Let me know where y'all are watching from. I'd love to know where you're watching from and how your quarantine is going. So be sure to put that in the, in the, uh, in the, in the chat here or in the comments if you're watching this on the replay. Be sure y'all, if you're watching on the replay, to uh, enter your comments in there, ask your questions in the comment section. I do go back and answer every question eventually. So uh, I get to those as soon as I can. So if you have a question around texting, what to text him, why to text him this, you know, what should I, what should or shouldn't I do, right? Put them in the comment, put them in the comments and I'll be happy to do it. What's up, Laura NA? How you doing? Sally Jacobus is here. Tressie from Missouri, Music Soul. All right, Jenna from Cali. I love it. So let's dive in. Let's just start talking about this because it's this is some really important stuff, right? So what, why do we want to use texting? How do we want to use texting? We want to use texting intentionally. We want to be intentional in our texting, okay? This is the most fundamental principle. And why is that? Why is that? Why do you think that is? We want to be intentional in, where, in how we're texting because you as a woman, fundamentally, whether you know it or not, you are the conductor of the way that you communicate with your partner. You are the one guiding the dynamic. You are the one setting the example, right? So if, if love is a symphony, I use this metaphor a lot, uh, you are the conductor and texting is a fundamental way where you as the woman in the situation, right? In the connection with men, you are the one setting the tone and demonstrating to him how you want that connection to go. Does that make sense? Give me a one if that is landing with you because you can, if you are intentional in the way that you text with men, you can use this as a tool to build attraction, 
to build intimacy and a lot of other exciting stuff. Or texting can become something that if it's used wrong, can really depolarize and devalue you, know, you in his eyes or, or create a situation where he wants to pull away from you. Okay, so what is the intention of the texting conversation that you are having with him? This is super important. What are you trying to create? Are you trying to create attraction? Are you trying to, tr are you trying to create polarity? right by embodying a feminine way of being so are you using traction are you using texting to convey that you're being playful like are you are you teasing him or is that is that is that is that what you're using it for right that's a powerful tool you can use texting for right so let's be let's be clear on before you send a text before you start twiddling your thumbs your check-in question is what am i trying to create what am i looking to create through this through this message so I want to break up texting protocol or texting etiquette, right, into two basic uh, timelines, right, in two basic time frames. You've got early stage dating, and then you've got later stage dating. So can you see why it would be important to, uh, to, to, to be clear on that? And so put in the comments, put in the comments what you think early stage texting should look like. I love, this is a conversation, y'all. So I wanna hear from you. If you're watching live, if you're watching on the replay, be sure to put in the comments there too. What do you think, what is early stage dating texting supposed to be around? Okay, it's very important to look at that and ask yourself that because you do not want to get to know someone. And this is a fundamental rule. You do not want to get to know someone in the early stages of dating over text message. You don't. That is not the way to do it. Like, like love always says, exactly. That is boring. <laughs> it's boring. It's a boring, it's boring. It's boring to do that. It, it, it doesn't, it, it, that doesn't create attraction. It D de, it deescalates the, the urgency and the intimacy of the situation. You don't want to get stuck into doing the daily report. So Sharon says, uh, fun, free, relaxed. That's beautiful, Sharon. And that is a great, that's a great way. So when you're getting to know somebody, especially like right now, right? In this social distancing time that we're in, uh, we want to be very conscious of we're not getting to know them over texting. Texting from the space of intentionality should be used in several important ways. Okay. So one of the things that texting, I'm going to put it here in the comments and then I'm going to add it. So, uh, so one of the things that texting should be used for is logistics, right? So planning. So you texting should be in the early stages of dating. Texting is a tool, right? Texting is a tool that you want to use specifically for a couple, a couple reasons, right? One of the things you want to do with texting is use it as logistics. So what are logistics? Planning dates. You want to use texting intentionally to plan dates. Hey, so where are we meeting for lunch, right? What are we doing? Texting is, that's like one of the primary things, like use it as a tool for logistics, planning a date. It's very, very, very important that you keep it there, right? So another important thing to use texting for in the early stages of dating is flirting, flirting. <laughs> so flirting. So are you flirting with him over text message? Now, flirting is not sexting, right? Unless you're into that, right? What I would not advise that if you're looking to build intimacy and build a relationship with a man, do not use, uh, do not escalate it sexually too early, but do use it to flirt. Get used to using the winky face, right? Be like, hey, so I was, I was, I was thinking about, I was thinking about you, right? I was thinking about you, like be playful, be playful. So you crossed my mind, like you crossed my mind right now. You know, were you thinking about me too, winky face? Just like a little, just a little bit of flirtation. I had a really fun time last night. Hopefully I see you again soon, you know, with a smiley face or some dots or whatever. Leave the door open. Use it as a playful, a playful invitation. Jenna says, uh, I love flirting, being sarcastic. Jenna, give us your best, give us your best sarcastic, flirty, uh, flirty thing that you would say in text messages. Let's get strategic with this, y'all. I'd love to like get some like good examples and I'll have plenty of examples. Uh, and, and please, please let me know what yours, what yours are. Okay. So, uh, Susie's asking, can you give examples of flirting texts? Well, flirting texts can look a lot of different ways. So simply just saying, uh, you know, 
I had a great, I had a great time. Let's see. So uh, a good flirting text. Let's see. I'll play. <laughs> Elizabeth says, what about playful stickers? Yeah. So, uh, so a good flirting text would be like, say a, uh, like a picture, a picture of like, say you're at the mall, right? And you see uh, a jacket, right? That would look good on him. And you just say, oh, this, and you take a picture, you send him a picture of that jacket, right? And, and, and he says, and you say, hey, that would look really sexy on you, right? Uh, like this jacket would look cute on you, right? You're giving him a little validation. You're letting him know that you're thinking about him. Like, what are you trying to do when you're flirting? You're trying to make an invitation to him. You're opening the door to him. You want to let him know that you're thinking about him in sort of a playful, light, fun way. Right. So, uh, <laughs> Tressie says flirting texting is hard. Interesting. <laughs> uh, flirting texting is hard. So what about, uh, yeah. So Mindy says thinking, thinking of you, is that too simple? I absolutely think that that's beautiful. Like there, there are a few texts that sort of turn me on <laughs> more than, uh, more than, you know, knowing that, you know, a woman is thinking about me, especially after we've gone out or we've had a good conversation. Uh, and, and so Nanel says, Nanel says after that, they will ask you to send nudes. No, not all men will. A man who is interested in getting to know you, a man who is interested in really, uh, you know, like getting and building a relationship with you or playing the game with you, he will, he will not just escalate right to sending nudes, right? And if he does, that actually gives you a great opportunity to playfully set boundaries. And we're going to get to that in just a second. We're going to talk about the importance of setting boundaries over text in, uh, in another way, right? So I want you to think, I want you to think of flirting in texting in the early stages of getting to know somebody as like passing notes at the playground, right? Like remember when you were, uh, remember when you were little, remember when you were a little kid and, uh, and, and, and you liked somebody and you would send them a little, a little note, a little, a little thing around the playground, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's a, that's a really fun, powerful, uh, thing, you know, like that's a very, that's a very fun, powerful image to use when you're thinking about texting, texting a guy is you just want to be like, uh, I'm still, still buzzing from last night, dot, dot, dot. How are you feeling? You know, just something like that. A little, just a little, just a little hit, just a little hit, just a little like, Hey, I'm thinking about you last night was really fun. Or can you, can you believe that, uh, that, that guy we ran into, like, like refer back, especially if you've been on a date or you've had a thing with it, uh, and, and, and just refer back to it and be like, remember that, remember that crazy guy we met on the street last night? Like, what was his deal? This is so fun. Uh, so, uh, Ellen has a great point here. Uh, she says, we're all quarantined. <laughs> How does this apply when we can't plan uh, virtual dates? Would we, or we can't plan dates? Would we need to plan an instant virtual date instead? Yeah. You can, you can absolutely like, uh, it's really powerful to have a virtual date, right? To do like Bumble has now a video feature where you can do virtual dates. And then from there you build, you have that initial space of connected intimacy. Okay. But as, as I want to make sure, and I want to land this with you, you do not want to get to know him over text message in the early stages of dating. Because if you do that, you are setting the precedent. You are communicating to him that this is okay, that this is the way that you want to build this relationship. And, and men, a lot of times with communication, they're going to take the path of least resistance. <laughs> they're going to take the path of least resistance and they're just going to want to roll with uh, whatever it is. Like one of the most fun ways, like one of the ways that I have done uh, a virtual date uh, since this quarantine started, I did a virtual date uh, a couple nights ago is I, uh, I, she had a drink, she had a glass of wine, right? And I had a, I had a glass of soda or whatever. And, you know, we just, we just talked for like an hour, you know, we talked for like an hour and it was, it was really nice. So virtual dating is an actual thing. And given this situation that we're in, we all get to get good at it. We all get to get good at virtual dating because it is going to be a, a standard practice for the foreseeable future. So what is it what does it look like? You know, it looks it looks like anchoring in connected remote experiences, different types of virtual dates, taking a, going for a walk together, right, in your respective neighborhoods. 
you know, like you going outside, being on video, and then him being on video as well, and you guys just FaceTiming and walking around. It can look like that. Uh, Susie asked a great point. At which stage would you recommend FaceTiming? Honestly, once you've traded messages for like a day, like once you've traded, I, I, I like to recommend like a ladder, like a ladder approach to this where you ladder, you step up and escalate the level of intimacy every few days if, if, there's, if there's consistent communication. I, uh, I recommend, and I actually do this in, a, in, a, in, a, in my course, right? Uh, in Mastery of Connection, going into Mastery of Magnetism, uh, I recommend a whole process, right, to gradually escalate intimacy and dating. And it starts with you trading messages on whatever app, how you ever you've connected, right, for a couple days. No more than a couple days. There is no, there's no reason <laughs> to, uh, to spend, you know, more than a couple days messaging. After a couple days of messaging, if he's demonstrating consistent interest, then you move on to a, uh, a brief phone conversation, a brief phone conversation or a FaceTime, right? I personally enjoy skipping right to FaceTime, right? I skip right to FaceTime because I'd rather get both sides of it. I'd, I'd both rather get the visual and the auditory at the same time and just hang out, right? Just hang out with this person. But if you're a little shy and maybe you wanna warm up to it a little slower, you can, you can start with a phone call. You can start with a little phone call, talk to him for say 15 minutes, like 15, 20 minutes or so, and see if that chat goes well, right? And then hit the, hit the, you know, hit the timer on it, right? And make sure it doesn't go super long. And then be like, okay, this has been fun. Why don't we do like a virtual date, right? And you guys can go, you can go to maybe uh, like a taco cart if there's a taco cart near you or go for like a walk with your dog. He, he can go for a walk with his dog and you two can uh, be, be, you know, on FaceTime together and hold your phones up and just chat. But Mindy has a great, a great comment. Just don't be too, don't be, don't get too close when the poop bags come out. You don't necessarily want to see your dog's, uh, yeah, your dog's poop. One Sunny says, virtual dates are awesome. Aren't they, One Sunny? Tell us about, please share, y'all. Share in the chat, share in the comments about your best virtual dates, y'all. We'd love to have you on. For everybody joining, what's up? Say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And y'all, if you haven't taken Mastery of Connection yet, it is my uh, it is my tra flagship transformational relationship and love course. It's about learning to connect with yourself and others and transform it from the inside out. It is an incredibly powerful course. Uh, uh, and it, I'm offering it for free one last time for members of my community. You can be a beta tester of Mastery of Connection. Go through the link down uh, below me there, masteryofconnection.com, or the link in the description of this video to uh, become a beta tester. We start April 13th. It's going to be an incredible experience. And if you have any questions about that course, put it in the comments, put it in the caption. We'd love, I'd love to answer anything you have, but you get live coaching with me twice a week in there and four uh, modules, 25 video lessons in there. Okay. So it's a great experience. We'd love to have you. Uh, One Sunny says you can get very creative and have so much fun on vi virtual dates. I love it. Uh, DP has a great thing, uh, a great a great point here. You don't want to you don't want to you don't want texting to be more frequent more frequent than face to face meetings. Exactly. So texting, especially in early stage relationships, don't be texting more frequently and have texting be the primary form of getting to know somebody. Text with intentionality. Okay. Uh, and another important point I want to make here that's super uh, important is don't make assumptions around response time, okay? This is uh, a big thing. Don't make assumptions around response time, okay? I know that a lot of people, a lot of people get, th what happens is when you text somebody, right? And then there's a bit of a gap from when they texting you back, what do we do? We start filling that gap up with our stories. <laughs> we start filling that gap up with, uh, you know, oh, because we don't know this person that well yet. Oh, they must not like us. Oh, they must be playing games with us. We start dumping all of our narratives and start projecting, right, often a lot of our beliefs and our cynicism and maybe our wounds in relationship onto that gap. And what I want to invite you to do is to not do that. What I want to invite you to do is let go of outcome dependence on when he responds or how he responds, okay? Because you don't know. He might just be busy. Mindy says he might just have a life outside of you. He might, right? So let's be let's be clear, right? Like uh 
Uh, Karen makes a beautiful point here. Texting forces you to make assumptions, communicate, communicate clearly, and as best as you can, don't make assumptions <laughs> around the texting dynamic. Uh, Lenore has a great comment here. Lenore is one of my amazing magnets, one of my students, and she took Mastery Connection. She said it changed her life. I love that, Lenore, and love you. Uh, it was so incredible watching your transformation throughout this process. Mastery Connection, is the core. it's so cool to watch women transform and step into a deeper understanding of how powerful they are, how magnetic they are, and really help them understand like the kind of relationship they're worthy of. Like Mastery your connection helps you create the sort of life and love that you're worthy of at a really deep level. So if you're ready for that, sign up at masteryconnection.com. We'd love to have you as part of our tribe. We start April 13th and it's free. So it's a really, uh, it's a really great, great value. All right. So Karen says here, uh, DP, we're in love. Much of Matt's material has helped me. Beautiful. We have virtual dates all the time by phone and a lot of texts since he's a workaholic, not by choice. It happens. It happens a lot, right? So, so these are all important principles that I want you to keep in mind in early stage dating. Uh, another big one that I want you to remember when it comes to early stage dating is this, okay? Is that we want to... Uh, we want you want to allow a man in the early stages of dating to be the primary initiator or driver in early texting. Okay, you want him to be initiating most of the time, like if if possible, right? But it doesn't need to be all the time. Do not be afraid to initiate. Don't be afraid to initiate. Don't be afraid to ask him a playful question. Okay, uh, like don't be afraid to initiate. Like, but let him let him be the driver most of the time. Does that make sense? Give me a one if y'all can relate to that because you do want to set that template. You as the conductor, you want to set a template where he is primarily initiating and driving forth that uh, that conversation and you are inviting him and guiding him uh, for towards that, okay? So one of the ways that you can do that is to initiate with questions or light playful statements that show your true self. Okay, uh, so here's a good one. I came up with a good one here. So what would be an example? Let's, I'm gonna throw it to you. What would be an example of questions or light playful statements that you could use to initiate a dialogue with a man? I'd love to hear from you. And for those of you watching on the replay, put it in the comments. I want this to be the same conversation and the same experience uh, that, you, that you have, okay? So what would be some what would be some fun little questions you could ask a man to uh, to engage and to initiate with him? All right. <laughs> and yes, please, y'all put your com put your questions in the comments. I will be answering those uh, as we go through this show. So just uh, if and hang on till the end. I'll be answering more questions. I'll do more of a Q and A here in the second half an hour of the show. It's going to be an hour long show. Okay. <laughs> so here's like so here's an example of a of a fun light playful question or just a little statement you could ask, right? Like, isn't the sky beautiful today? Days like this just make me want to go out into the woods and get lost. Winky face, right? So that's like one of those statements where I look at what you're doing. You're you're initiating, right? You're letting him know how much you appreciate. You're being positive, right? How much you appreciate the day, how much you appreciate the present moment. And then you're talking about how days like this just make you want to go on an adventure, you know, uh, so so really like see what you're doing there. You're making an invitation. You're doing stuff like that, and you're helping him uh, see and 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 let him know like how playful you are, right? Uh, Keto has a great thing. What if texting is the only option when he's deployed in, to Iraq in the military? Yeah, texting will for I honestly like for deployment that used to be a mandatory texting situation, but right now a lot of us are kind of in a mandatory texting zone. So, uh, Alvina Rain, are you getting out there and are you, are you, are you mixing it up? Are you mixing up the texting dialogue? Cause that's actually shifting into long-term relationship texting. Here's a fun, here's a fun question that Mindy Slimmer has. What's your favorite song right now? I love that Mindy. And I think that's a great, that's a, that's a great one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the, uh, DJ, the DJ air horn. <laughs> Oh, that one, or no, even better, I'm gonna give you the round of applause. So every time someone makes a great, uh, makes a great suggestion on this, I'm gonna give y'all a, uh, a sound effect. So lots of, uh, lots of exciting stuff. 
Boom. This is a good one. Have you ever, have you ever taken a hot blue? I've always wanted to take a hot air balloon ride. Have you ever done that? And I love that. Let's give it, let's give it some love. <laughs> That's a really fun one too, because what are you also doing? You're making an invitation for him to, uh, to, to take action, right? You're grounding in a feeling statement. I would love to do this. Have you ever done that? So you're asking him to make a share and you're giving him an invitation to plan and initiate a fun date. So that is fundamentally a polarizing, a very polarizing question and principle. So good job, One Sunny. We're gonna give you the DJ. <laughs> it's so good. So uh, so yeah. So what's a way that you can make a uh, make a make a statement, make a text that's both an invitation to take action and playful, right? This is super, super, super powerful stuff. And uh, let's see, uh, Laura's saying, what are your passions in life? Now see, Laura, that's that's a little tricky to ask as a, as a question, especially in the early stage dating, because then you're, then you're starting to get into getting to know him over text message, right? And so playful questions, light questions, question about an activity is great, but I would save the what are your passions in life questions, the deeper questions for uh, either audio or video chat. Okay, so uh, I think it's super, super, super uh, important. Yeah, uh, here we go. Uh, Jenna, Jenna says, always fun to tell him you're doing something he's passionate about. Uh, IG, I, I texted hit mine to tell to say I was watching a Star Wars marathon, marathon, which is which was haha. -ha. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So something that shows congruency of interests. That is, that's beautiful. And we're going to get to that here a little later. I'm going to share some more specific ways to text a man to build a uh, relationship and connection with him. Okay. So, but now I want to, I want to go into, oh, and so the one last thing I want to say around timing, around timing, especially in early stage texting, this is a very important point that I want to make here. Okay. This is the point. The point is that, you know, uh, when it comes to timing in texting, which I know can be a slippery slope in the early stages of getting to know somebody, you don't want to respond too quickly or too far after the fact. In fact, you want to be gauging your response times based around his response times. Match his pacing there as long as it's reasonable, okay? Like, and this is not being gamey, this is you meeting him at the level where he's at. So if he's somebody who maybe has a little bit of a slower rhythm, like maybe he texts once every hour or two or or even three, right? Like, or four, I don't know, like what, maybe he's very busy, right? Maybe he can only really have access to his phone at night. That isn't any sort of statement against you. Are you see what I'm saying? So match his rhythm, match his rhythm in texting. You know, and that way, you know, he's not going to feel like you're pressuring him for more communication than he can do. Remember, men don't generally have a lot of uh, emotional agency. So a lot of them are, you know, like they're or they're not really necessarily good at texting. They don't know the rules of how to text. So be uh, be very, you know, connected to him in that process. Uh oh, Lenore looks like she's got a good one here. Boom. Oh, what do we got? Look at that. I'm watching the Mets. How do you like going to games? Right there. You're demonstrating an interest. You're uh, giving him a feeling statement and you're making an invitation. So talk, so see how we're being intentional in the way we're texting and we're using it to build engagement, to build polarity, to build attraction. And like, look at what that Star Wars, uh, look at what that Star Wars marathon thing did for Genesee. It sparked an entire conversation around the movies. Him saying he wished he was there. So that's very, very, very powerful. I love it. Uh, Karen asked lots, apparently Karen's guy asked her lots of questions that were value-based and he would tell a story to see how he responds. And yeah, that's a really powerful thing because in the way that we text and in the way that we dialogue with each other, we're actually going to be demonstrating each other's values, right? That's a, that's a great one. I love that one. Here, I'm going to give you the, give you the, give you the old air. <laughs> Let me start overusing these. I need to stop. <laughs> Have you learned a new dance move these days? Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm just telling you. There's so many ways to use texting as a fun, 
playful, playful thing. So Tressie is asking, how do I join the Mastery Connection? Well, Tressie, it's right here. I'm going to move it up. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, it's coming over my face. <laughs> Head on over to masteryofconnection.com and you can sign up there. Uh, it's a simple application. You'll get a response back after someone from my team has rev reviewed your answers to your application. But uh, it is a 100% uh, free as a beta tester. I love your, uh, I need your feedback right? To make this the best test, to make this the best course possible. And so this is going to be the last time I'm doing it as a beta test. So if you want to transform your relationships in all areas of your life, your friends, your family, and your romantic relationships, and really set yourself up for the life and love that you're worthy of, come with us and master your connection. Lenore has done it. Many of the people that are watching this right now have done it. Feel free to put in the comments if you've done it and what your experience was. I'd love to hear it, but it's a wonderful experience and uh, you get free coaching with me twice a week uh, for two hours. It is fantastic, okay? So would love to have you in Mastery of Connection, okay? So now I want to go on to later dating. So in later dating, what, is it, what does it look like? So I'm talking about after you've already built up some intimacy, you've built up some, uh, you've built up some time with him, right? This is what you wanna do. Oh, Knit Pain is excited to be a part of the course. Yay, we're excited to have you, my dear. That's so great. Can't wait. Boom. So uh, later texting. Oh, no, I'm gonna give you, you, get, you definitely get a applause. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> for joining up. Yeah, and One Sunny's coming along too. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. So, so look at this. So, Jenna, Jenna, <laughs> Jenna C, this is a great example of what happens when you when you go through this strategy, right? Yeah, uh, her boyfriend told told her that which movie was his favorite, so I promised we'd watch it together. He's chased me up on doing that uh, the weekend. See, look at that. So you guys are building that connection, building that intimacy. Lots of people are uh, excited about coming to Mastery Connection. That makes me so happy. Okay. So, uh, keep putting your questions y'all down in the box. I will be answering those as we go. Uh, let's go. So let's talk about, let's talk about later dating. So later dating, you've been with somebody for a little while. You've built up some time with him. You've built up some familiarity with him. You're over those early sort of getting to know -y type stages. What is later, what does texting look like in later dating? I like to say that in later dating, texting is like a dance. You want to read your partner and flow with him, right? So in dancing, it's the two of you moving together, right? And someone is usually in the lead and someone is following. And it doesn't mean that one person is more dominant than the other or anything like that. But I want you to, it really gets down to, you know, like what is your, what sort of, texting rhythm does your partner have? Do you guys have a daily chat dynamic? Do you guys talk throughout the day? That is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing to, to chit chat throughout the day if that's a normal dynamic. If you've already established a baseline intimacy through face-to-face -face connection and communication, and that's the primary way that y'all communicate, and that's the way that you two get to know each other, then you can have a little daily chat going throughout the day as long as that's comfortable to both of you. Some people are, give me a one if y'all are if y'all do the daily chat with your partners, right? Because there's nothing wrong with that. If that works for you, that's great. Or give me a two if you're suffocated by the daily chat. <laughs> so uh, that's a huge, that's those are the big distinction. It's a big distinction. Uh, Lenore says, oh, Mastery Connection, do it. Matt's so involved, great content, life-changing, so sweet, Lenore. Lenore is one of my rock star students. I love it. Uh, Mindy, Mindy says, uh, morning text, good night text. Those are some of my favorite ones. If I'm dating somebody, if I'm getting to know somebody, even in the early stages, it, it always makes me happy to sort of wake up to a text from a girl that I'm seeing. Like, uh, like even if it's just a little bit emoji, like woke up, woke up or woke up thinking about you with a little, with a little winky face, or if you've never done bit emojis, guys, they're really fun. And you can basically make an animated version of yourself with lots of fun little, uh, images, right. Where you can be like holding a big heart or, you know, like waking up to a sunrise or a sunset. Right. So I, I love a good morning text. I love a good night text. Cause I think those are really times where you can anchor to a person that you're getting to know that they mean something to you, that you're the first thing I thought about when I got up or the last thing I thought about when I went to sleep, right? So uh, just sort of read your partner, read your partner and, and check out your partner 
check out your partner and remember it's uh yeah mindy mindy gets it bitmojis are super fun they are right but remember y'all this is a dance texting is a dance and and be sure to recognize that and brenda says i'm text i'm actually chatting with my man now okay <laughs> what do you want to text him brenda let's do some live some live coaching around uh, around your around your texting. <laughs> so yeah, look at this. We got lots of people. Uh, Inspirational Ingrid says, "I love Bitmoji. I do too. If y'all haven't checked it out, please check it out. It is a uh, it's a it's a great time." Uh, Mindy says, "Your beautiful eyes matching with your beautiful T-shirt." Wow, are you saying that to me, or is that a text you want to send your guy? <laughs> Either way, I'm I'm on board. <laughs> Uh, Arlet says, okay, here we go. Sometimes I feel bad when he goes a day without texting me. And this is at the six month mark. Okay. So Arlet, I want you to look at that. And I want you to ask yourself, is this a change from his normal thing? Like, and, and what stories are you making up around it? Right. Uh, cause that's the thing. Whenever someone is doing something like that, right. And, and we're, we're allowing ourselves to feel hurt about it. It's because we've created a story around ourselves based upon their uh, their behavior, right? So I want you to look at, you know, like what story am I making up about that delay in texting? And is it serving me? Is it true? And would it look, can I, can I absolutely know it to be true, right? Because a lot of times if a guy goes a day without texting you, you you're going to create a narrative around it, right? Look at your narratives. Uh, if, if, you know, oh, this person must, you know, they must not be thinking about me. I must not be important to them or something like that. We make it, we take it personally. And there's so much liberation available, I promise you, in not taking things personally, especially when it comes to texting, right? It's very, very, very uh, important. You know, it's very, very important for you to not take it personally. But then you can always ask him. You can be like, hey, so... Uh, did, was it, did you have, did you have a busy day? Like, how was your day? You know, I didn't, and, and not accuse him cause you don't want to accuse him here, but just be like, Oh, you know, I, I missed you. I missed you today in like a playful way. Be like, you know, I, I didn't hear from you all day. Was it, was it a busy one? And you're not, you're coming from a space of curiosity. You're not coming from a hurt space. You're not coming from a space of aggression, right? You're coming from a space of of curiosity and concern and support. Because remember, men want a partner. They want a partner. They want a person that feels, you know, like they feel like is on their wavelength and is supportive of them and isn't coming at them in like an accusatory manner. Because once you do that, you run the risk of activating his mama trauma. <laughs> Why didn't you text me today? And then it becomes, uh, it becomes an issue. Okay, so uh, you don't want to be looking at, at, you don't want to be looked at as his mother, right? And every man has a fundamental uh, wound around their mother. Okay, so Karen has a, Karen has a great, a great text. So put, yeah, put your best text, put your best activating text, y'all, down in the, uh, down in the comments, please. I'd love to, I'd love to share them here with the tribe. Uh, Karen says, I dreamed about you last night. I didn't want to wake up. I thought of, I th thought of you. I woke up with a smile. Beautiful. I would be lit up. I would be lit up by that if I got that from uh, a woman that I was a woman that I was dating. <laughs> how do you know if they're how do you know if they are busy, getting bored or just going into their man cave? Well, I think you can really tell by the uh, by the consistency of the reaction and also the context right? If it's during the day when they should be working or they've got a lot of things on their plate, then chances are like they're busy, right? They're working. Remember y'all, men are single focus. Men are single focus. We are not diffused focus, especially. And so when it comes to work, a lot of times we are fully into our work. That is the thing. Uh, and, and so you want to, you want to always give them and exactly. And Karen makes a great point here is that, you know, you want to give, you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. If you two are in a healthy relationship, give him the benefit of the doubt. Assume that he's busy, right? Create an assumption around it that uh, benefits all of you, right? And if you have a genuine question, ask him later from a vulnerable, curious space. Like, hey, so how was your day? What was going on? You know, and uh, it's it's important to just be gentle with with this, okay? Uh <laughs> Look at this. this is this is fun. Oh, Sophie. Sophie says. Sophia Murgi says. 
Uh, the man I'm dating told me I always start a chat fight if he doesn't write back, if he doesn't write baby sweetheart <laughs> to me when he texts. I never noticed. Okay, so look at that. He, he gave you some powerful feedback there. He let you know that you're getting triggered and you're being retaliatory to him if uh, if you, if, if you don't give him, or if he doesn't give you exactly the pet names that you want. So that's powerful. So, so Sophia, were you able to take that feedback and, and shift your behavior or did you take that personally? <laughs> Cause it sounds like you have a tendency to get, uh, to get triggered, right? <laughs> It's a super, super important, super important thing. Oh my gosh, people are talking about pick pickleball <laughs> down in the uh, down in the chat. I love it. Okay, so Brenda, Brenda says here he is working and will be on his lunch break soon. I told him that I have a neck with two sides he can nibble on. Woo! He can't hardly wait till his break. You get it, girl? That gets you. That gets you a round of applause. <laughs> that's a that's a great one. That's a great one. And right there, future pacing, right? If you, one of the great ways we can use text intentionally is as a future pacing tool, an inviting tool. I, I can tell you like when I get into like a juicy texting exchange with like a girl that I'm dating, it's like one of the most, it can be one of the most uh, activating, right? Arousing things you can do when you start, when, when a woman starts like telling you, you know, what she wants to do later and everything else, like it'll drive a guy nuts. So just know like that is some serious power that you have just by using your thumbs in a deliberate, intentional way. You can really just make him make him crazy. <laughs> you know, you can make him crazy. So Brenda, good work. We, uh, we, we love it. We love it. Okay, so uh, Zyli asks, so there's nothing wrong with a woman if a woman texts him good morning first? Nope. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I, I wouldn't do it every morning, right? Like you don't want to get into the into the habit of always initiating uh, text conversation with him, right? But you're welcome to uh, you're welcome to text him good morning. You know, just don't do it every day, right? You don't want to be the consistent initiator in in the dynamic with him. Does that make sense? Give me a one if y'all can relate to that. So uh, initiating sometimes is fine, right? Especially because, especially if he's a man that maybe isn't really comfortable with texting, uh, you wanna, but it's okay to do it some of the time. And men appreciate it. Men, it gets, it gets, it gets exhausting for a man to always feel, and I'm speaking from <laughs> personal experience, to always feel like he always has to be the driving, pressing, force of every aspect of the relationship. Remember, especially when it comes to communication, you're the conductor. You can be the initiator sometimes. You can be the inviter and the activator in the texting and dynamic of the relationship, okay? Uh, so, uh, wow, Karen, that's a powerful one here. Sweetheart, I cannot tell you how special you are in my life. You have brought so much peace in my life. You always make me smile. If you only knew what was on my mind right now. Yeah, and see, that's that's really hot because you're, you're leading with a, a deep, intimate statement, and then you're sort of giving him a sort of teasing, hiding the ball uh, sort of thing of like, oh, if you only knew what I was thinking about, because then he's going to ask, what are you thinking about, right? And you're gonna be like, you're just gonna have to find out later, right? Now you got the pump primed, right? You got the pump primed and he's gonna be thinking about you all day. And that's a really powerful thing you can do with text message is you can get a guy like hot and bothered, right? And get him so everything so that, that you can use it as a way of building sexual tension, building polarity. So then when you guys finally get home, boom, <laughs> it's, on right it is on <laughs> exactly yeah his, his exactly mindy his uh his imagination is running wild <laughs> it's super super powerful so please y'all please keep putting your uh putting your putting your comments put your comments put your questions in the chat if you're watching the replay put your questions or your comments down in the comments box and i will be going through and uh and using them okay so another great way to use uh is to use texting is to use texting to set boundaries, right? So texting is a powerful way that we can set boundaries in relationship with men. And so why would this be important, right? This is important because a lot of times men will try to do what over text? They'll try to get sexual, 
right? And maybe it's too early for that, right? Maybe it's, you know, not you're not looking to take it there, right? So remember, y'all, you are the conductor. You get to set the tempo of this, of these dynamics, of your emotional and communicative dynamics of relationship. And one of the best ways you can do that is by is by is by setting boundaries with him in a playful, playful way. So say he's like asking for a, uh, a a dirty picture right and you guys are just getting to know each other and and you know you're not comfortable with that yet you could you could say something like like this and then I'm gonna explain I'm gonna explain a little bit about what it means okay so you could say say he's trying to like get a get a naked picture or trying to get you to dirty text with him this is something uh, and and uh, this is something you could you could say to him okay? Like that sounds, that sounds, and this is again, if this is a guy, this is a guy that if you actually are wanting to get to know him, okay? So obviously if this is a guy that you haven't met or whatever, uh, it could be a, just a sign that he's just a, a fuck boy or whatever. And that could be a good enough sign for you to just, just back out of it, right? But if he is somebody that does have some value in your life, uh, you could say something like, that sounds fun, but I would take things a little slower, winky face. So you're giving him a little acknowledgement and then you're giving him a statement from your values, right? Saying, I would take things a little slower, but then you're giving him, you're basically redirecting him into an invitation. So you're giving him a little affirmation and then redirecting him into an invitation to do something else fun. You see, you see the power in that? So you're not saying, I'm not that kind of girl, stop talking to me like that. You're not reprimanding him because it's not a bad thing, right? That he's attracted to you. That isn't, that isn't a bad thing. But what it does get to be is it gets to be, you know, a sort of redirection into something else <laughs> that you actually want to do. So you're not going to be bruising his ego too much and he's going to know that you're still interested, right? But you're taking it in a different direction. So give me a one. Let me know if that lands with you, if that's something that, you know, so how can you do this in your own uh, in your own relationships, in your own texting dynamics with men. Just know that if he is a man who is in his masculine, he is likely going to be pressing a little bit on, uh, on, on, on your pressing the envelope a little bit, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad person. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's a fuck boy. It just means that in general, men are looking to see what's available. <laughs> like they just are, right? So please, please don't necessarily, if a man does, you know, make a gentle attempt to escalate with you kind of early on, don't take that as a sign that he's just some perved out degenerate, okay? Because it's not necessarily the case at all. All, especially if you say some, if you make a statement like, oh, I uh, can't talk, jumping in the shower. Like if you open that door for a man, right? And you make some a statement that you're, you're jumping in the shower, you're like opening the door for him to like want to be like, uh, pictures or it didn't happen right? Like, I don't, I don't believe you, winky face, you know, like, so don't, don't, don't necessarily make up a huge story about a guy just because he, uh, just because he, you know, might make a, a cute little request for a, a picture of you in a towel or something, okay? But on the other hand, uh, Tressy's situation where a guy asked for video sex, first time texting, yeah, that guy, probably not a guy that you want to be talking to, <laughs> <laughs> so right there, that's a that's a big uh, no no go. So let's see, do I have a a, no, a noise that we're gonna say? No, that's a no go. I'm giving it the bicycle horn, <laughs> the lamest of the sounds I have at my disposal uh, to tell you that we don't want we don't want that. We don't want guys looking for video uh, texting. Oh yeah, oh, this is a good. That's that's a nice redirect. If he if he if he asks for a picture to prove that you're getting in the shower, take a picture of the water running. That's brilliant, Mindy. I love it. Uh, that's a see. And look at that. Look what you're doing there. You're not like rejecting him. You're just redirecting. And that's a good one, Mindy. You definitely get a you get a DJ or horn. <laughs> uh this is this is an interesting question dps what to say when he sends a topless photo of himself without uh even asking oh gosh and i i understand this question and i understand that this happens a lot out there uh and it depends part of it depends on how early on in the in the situation it is you know 
uh, as if it's super early on and he's sending you like topless photos or he's sending you like the picture where he's like holding his junk in one hand and doing like a selfie in the other hand. It's just like, uh, it's just a little, it's just it maybe a little much. You could say something to the effect of, you know what you could do, what you could send him that would be super funny is send him uh, that, that meme of, uh, what's his name, of... Will Ferrell playing Anchorman, right? Playing, playing the playing the main character in Anchorman, and like, well, that escalated quickly. Send him like a meme. Send him like a meme, just like jokingly being like, "Whoa, bro, way too soon," you know. Like, and especially if you are c- conceivably interested in getting to know this guy, like, just playfully indicate to him that this is like too. Uh, this is like way earlier than you're looking to do that. <laughs> Like maybe maybe say something to the effect of, I don't remember asking for uh you know a personal performance of Magic Mike a personal performance of Magic Mike, <laughs> you know uh yeah like so just jokingly deflect, tone it down a little bit. Uh, Ron Burgundy, that's the guy. I was God, I gotta not remember his name. Yeah, send him the Ron Burgundy meme of that. Well, that escalated quickly, and then be like, you know, let's pump the brakes, buddy. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know you yet. <laughs> keep keep your shirt on. I'm not. I'm not asking for the shirt off your back. <laughs> Give him a little a little something like that. Lenore says the shirt is a t- is a is a total turnoff. <laughs> yeah, the 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 old bathroom pick. Uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Tiff says, my friend was texting a guy who sent pictures of his chest, belly, etc. She sent him a picture of her in panties and a t-shirt. She's got a great bod. He hasn't texted her since. Wow. Maybe she, maybe he's, she scared him off, right? That's a, that's an unusual outcome there, Tiff. <laughs> that is not usually the way, uh, that it happens, right? Uh, so, so yeah. So, so just look at texting. Are you treating it intentionally? Are you playfully setting positive boundaries, right? Are you setting the tempo, letting him know that's a little much, why don't we do this instead, right? Because every time you make a rejection or a, or a stop with a guy, always give him an outlet. Like, well, I'm not really, if he's somebody that you're looking to get to know, you know? Uh, and Jenna has a good question. If you're aiming for friends with benefits, listen, if you're aiming for friends with benefits, I mean, cool, right? Like he sends you a picture with the shirt off. Awesome. You send him one back. I mean, again, I'm not here to judge what anybody out here is looking for, right? If that's what you're looking for and it's going to, es- then it's going to escalate a lot quicker, right? And that's okay because you're looking for a friends with benefits uh, situation. I mean, so generally speaking, those you're not looking to create a lot of uh, emotional intimacy with this person, right? You're looking to uh, find someone that you can have fun with in a, in a casual way that's on the same page as you. So that's a totally different, uh, dynamic, right? (laughs) So, so yeah, so please, you know, uh, let me know what your questions are around this super, super, super important. And now uh, I have a really important point that I want to make, and this applies to all aspects of texting super powerful go multimedia to create deeper engagement in texting get out of the thumb typing out words zone okay texting should be a full blown multimedia event okay and one of the first ways to do this that so many people have a heart that so many people don't take advantage of that they really should is to use uh, video or audio messages, right? So instead of you just texting him a message, send him a little voice memo. Be like, "Hey, I was thinking, I was thinking about you. How are you doing today?" Right there. And so think about that. He's getting the words that are already activating, and he's getting the additional energy of your voice. Right? That is, uh, that's powerful. That's powerful, right? So have you thought about sending? To sending him an audio or even a video message, right? A little video message. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? As you're out walking around, like stuff like that, he's getting to see you. And what is that? What is that portraying? I'll tell you what it portrays. It portrays confidence. It portrays a lot of confidence that you're willing to allow yourself to be heard or allow yourself to be seen in a really powerful way, right? So are you using audio or video messages, right? To, to break up the monotony a little bit of just the never ending stack 
of text. You know what I'm saying? It's much more engaging, it's much more activating, and it's gonna create deeper connection uh, with him. Okay, so this is an important, this is another important point. So another big important point of multimedia, multimedia texting is to mix things up with pictures. Mix things up with pictures, okay? So pictures can look a lot of different ways. They can look like memes. Memes are amazing. Memes are so much fun. Mindy said it right up here. She, she beat me to the punch. Uh, send him memes that demonstrate your sense of humor, especially now in this wild coronavirus Twilight Zone episode <laughs> that we're currently living through, right? Use your memes <laughs> to, uh, to, to help connect, to help connect with you know, him and to let him know your sense of humor around this pandemic or politics, or whatever you're into. Memes are a super powerful tool that, uh, that, you, can, that you can use, okay? And another thing that you, yeah, Mindy has another great point here. I mean, Mindy, you're my co-host this, uh, this, this week. Uh, pictures of you having fun, huge, Mindy, huge, and so true. Pictures of you out having fun. Hey, wish you were here, right? Super, 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 super powerful. And uh, another thing, and this is another great way of, of, of doing this, selfies or recently purchased outfits like, you know, just pick this up and it's like a little dress or you in like a dressing room trying it on, a selfie. It's showing that you're confident in yourself and you're not, you're not like resistant to, uh, to connect with him and demonstrate who he is. To, to who you are to him. You see what I'm saying? So give me a one, y'all, if you can relate to this. And, and give, me, give me a two. Give me a two if, you, if you've signed up for Mastery Connection, if you've done it, if you're excited about it. I'd love to see how many people on the call on our, on our, uh, on our live today are doing it. And if you have any questions, uh, those of you watching on the replay, let me know. I have a free beta launch of Mastery of Connection, my flagship course. It's a transformational love and relationship course. It's, mo it's a month long course with live coaching for me, video lessons, and it's absolutely free to you as a member of my community, as a beta tester. So this is your last opportunity to come out, come in as a beta tester. I will never be doing it as a beta test again. That is my commitment. <laughs> okay. So uh, check it out at masteryconnection.com. The link's right here. I'm putting it over my face. Ah! So go over to, head on over to www.masteryconnection.com. We'd love to have you as a beta tester and to join the fam. We've had over 4,000 women go through the course in the last year. It's going to be super fun. Laura's on board. Love it, love it, love it. Love that smile. She's got such a beautiful smile. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, love always. What if we haven't talked on the phone or text yet? Is it, good, is it a good idea for me to give him a note saying I'm interested if you are? Here is my phone number. Uh, so this is someone that you've been, how do you know him? <laughs> Have you talked to him through a dating app? I'd love to know more, uh, more about that. Okay. So please let me know more. That'd be fantastic. Uh, one sunny says I send sunsets to share. There are so many beautiful things to text besides the share besides assessing. Yeah. You can show how be how beautiful the world is and the things that you appreciate. Super powerful. Uh, Sarita. <laughs> I love this, Sarita. You're definitely getting a round of applause for that one. Videos of you twerking in your Ninja Turtle pajamas. Well played, Sarita. Yes, if I, I would, I would be like that. Would be one of those stories I would tell at like the wedding day. I'd be like, the moment I knew she was the one was when I saw her twerking. Uh, she sent me a video of her twerking in her Ninja Turtle pajamas, and I knew I was done. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those like I knew she was my soulmate. <laughs> Yay, Sally Jacobs is signing up for Mastery of Connection. Awesome, Sally. So excited to have you. Uh, it's going to be a blast. We're going to have a great time. We got over a thousand women already signed up uh, for this one. It is going to be fantastic. So welcome. If you guys have any questions about Mastery Connection, you can ask me here in the chat. I'm delighted to answer any questions you have. Just head over to MasteryConnection.com and sign up. Uh, Mindy is explaining a meme, <laughs> what a meme is for, uh, for people, which I appreciate that. Yes, it's a picture with a sarcastic comment or joke. It is. Memes are fantastic. Yeah, so check it out. If you don't know about memes, they're a great way to build, uh, to build intimacy, okay, with your, with your partner. All right, so uh, another great type 
of uh, of text to send a guy. This is this is huge. This is huge. Is uh, send him, boom, uh, articles. Whoop. Send articles around things you're passionate about or things you know he's passionate about. So this could be articles, this could be uh, pictures, this could be anything you think interesting, but but especially articles, right? Sh demonstrate your passions, demonstrate your interests to a man through what you share with him. Hey, so remember what we were, what we were talking about last night? You know, like here's an, here's an article about it. This is what I'm really into. So uh, this is really powerful stuff, y'all, because this is where you can actually deepen connection with a man over text message without having a deep conversation with him over text message because you do not want to. I am going to keep saying this <laughs> until y'all hear it. <laughs> you do not want to be having deep conversations with men over text message all the time. Give me a one if you're committed to doing that. You do not want to have deep conversations. You do not want texting to be the way you have deep conversations. But but sending articles, sharing media is a powerful way to show to exchange ideas and to help each other learn cool stuff, right? Without going all without 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 getting overly engaged and oversaturating. Uh, with that, right? So super, super important. Uh, Genesee has a great, great suggestion. BuzzFeed, right? And fun quizzes. Yeah, BuzzFeed is perfect. BuzzFeed articles are perfect, right? They're fun. They're engaging. They're a little deep. It's a great way to, uh, it's a great way to do it, okay? <laughs> so uh, it's super powerful. And another great thing about sending him things that you're, that you're both, that, that he's into, that he's passionate about, is that if you send him an article about something that he told you that he's passionate about, what is that demonstrating? It's demonstrating that you're listening to him, right? That's super powerful. It's super powerful for you to demonstrate uh, what for you to demonstrate, hey, I'm listening to you. I'm actively interested and curious about what it is that you are into. Here's an article that I randomly came across today. It made me think of you. Boom, send him that article. He's going to be like, wow, you know, she's actually paying attention. And it's sexy. It is really attractive when we feel that a woman is actively engaged and curious about what we're passionate about. Can y'all see that? I hope y'all are on board uh, with that because it is so true. Okay, so we got a big question here from Miss Julie Eaton. Julie says, met my guy online, have been video chatting only during the COVID. Should I disclose past meets slash relationships have been contacting me the last few days? Would it make him step away or would it make him step up or drive him away? I mean, if this is a guy that you just met and you're just starting to talk to and get to know, over uh, over this whole situation, this whole pandemic, you do not owe him <laughs> any sort of explanation of who else you're talking to, why they're talking to you, what the situation is. Like, you know, you don't owe him that, right? You don't owe him anything <laughs> at this point, right? You get to be just fully on board with, like, you can get to know him, right? Is, is he asking you about this? Because I'll be, I'm gonna be very clear with you. You do not need you don't need to tell him any of that, okay? You get to receive and allow him to, you know, pursue you and to talk to you, okay? Uh, and and you don't have to do that. Because it, 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 it might make him step up or it might drive him away. But either way, I don't think you're under any sort of expectation to do that for him, okay? Uh, and especially don't do it to try to manipulate a response from him. You don't want to. You don't want to start playing those games because oh, I've had like five ex boyfriends, <laughs> you know, uh, go through. And yeah, chances are, if a lot of guys, if if you tell a guy that a lot of other guys are reaching out to you right now, he might, yeah, it might it might make him pull away, right? Uh, and there's other ways to activate him to step up other than telling him that there's a lot of other guys reaching out to you. Okay. So that's, that's my coaching <laughs> around that. Boom. So Mary, Mary has, a, Mary's doing, I'm sending audio recordings saying about my thoughts, feelings for him by my own voice. Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, that's a, talk about an intimate treasure to give somebody. Uh, it's a super powerful, super powerful way to, to build intimacy, uh, with somebody. Okay. Uh, Jonesy's asking, do you reckon these texts would have the same effect on teenagers, 18 to 19 year olds? Absolutely, Jonesy. Yeah, the same. I mean, the same patterns with, with, young, with people that young, uh, it's, a little, it's a little different just because like the way teenagers text 
now <laughs> the way like post millennials text right is like it's it's a little different you know they're a little bit more all over the place you know they're a little bit more maybe elusive and everything but the fundamentals of this are still true right if you're looking to build a relationship if you're looking to build connection with a with with a person that age i'm assuming you're also that age <laughs> right you, you know just be be clear about who you are be clear about what you want be willing to to ask for it to communicate for it and 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 be that invitation right as a as a woman but also you know if you're talking to 18 19, 18 19 year old men recognize that like 18 19 year old men are not super mature <laughs> like so they're going to be very generally speaking very sexually minded you know and probably a little bit more aloof than you know uh men who are a little older although there's no guarantee that men get more mature as they get older, okay? It doesn't always happen. In fact, sometimes it just doesn't happen, <laughs> right? But especially when they're that young, you cannot anticipate uh, that that's gonna happen, okay? Mindy has another great suggestion of text to ask the guy. Pictures of cute dogs! Pictures of cute dogs! That's uh, that's a great one. I wish I had a dog, uh, a dog noise. I'm just gonna go with the, the applause there. Pictures of cute dogs are ultimate. If a woman sends me a picture of cute dogs, I, I'm basically in love with her. That's like, that's it. You know, if it's her with cute dogs, I'm done. Or even better, she sends me pictures of cute dogs that remind her of my dogs. Like, hey, I was out, I saw these Boston Terriers and I thought of you, woo! That's some wifey material right there. Cause I have two, for those of you who don't know, I have two Boston Terriers, okay? <laughs> so uh, something like that, just a, a picture or a video or a meme or an article that demonstrates and indicates that you're thinking about him, that you're uh, that he's in your thoughts, and that you know you're courageous enough and confident enough to share him that. Okay, so please keep putting your questions in the uh, in the chat, y'all. I am still answering questions here in the chat. Uh, Carol Ann has a great question here, and if you have any questions about Mastery of Connection, my uh, my my last free beta starts April 13th. You can sign up at MasteryConnection.com. Incredible transformational love and relationship course. It's going to be an amazing experience. You're going to have a full month of coaching with me, amazing video lessons around your beliefs, your attachment style, your personality type, uh, your vision, your values, your goals. I take you through all sorts of fun exercises and you, you, you get to be part of a huge tribe, a huge community of amazing women. And we'd love to have you with us. We start April 13th. The Facebook group, Facebook group opens April 8th. So sign on up uh, over at the website, right, right there, right there, there it is. <laughs> All right, so Carol Ann Sumner has a great question. Uh, what about after you've been talking online for over a year and he doesn't go forward from that, making excuses, should I turn away from him? Okay, Carol, so what it sounds like you're saying is uh, you've been talking to a man for a year and he has not taken the time to meet up with you? So that's a, that's a hard stop. That's a hard, that's a, I have told him what I want. And what is it that you want, Carol? <laughs> like, like Carol, you, so you get to be very clear, right? Around what it is that you're looking for, right? And what it is that you're, that you're willing to uh, field, right? In terms of relationship. And if this man is avoiding meeting up with you or he's resistant to connecting with you outside of talking online after a full year, there's, he's either unwilling or unable to uh, give you the type of intimacy and relationship that you want. And I invite you to step away from him. I invite you to, to because here's the thing, as long as you're talking to him, as long as you're staying in relationship, in connection with him, you are uh, inviting him to uh, keep taking your time and your energy. And I talked about this with Mark Rosenfeld on our live the other day, but some men just are sort of energy vampires. Like some men just enjoy and uh, and feed off of the energy and attention of a woman without ever having any uh, any intention to meet up with you. Uh, Mindy, <laughs> Mindy says he's been breadcrumbing you, girl. I mean, possibly, Mindy, possibly. Or maybe he just likes having somebody to text, somebody to talk to. 
But he says, she says they live across the country. Okay, we live on different sides of the country. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, that's tough, right? But last I checked, up until pretty recently, you could still get a flight across the country, right? Y'all could have planned a meetup at any time, right? And if he's not taking the initiative and planning a meetup with you after you have communicated clearly what you want, that you want to be in a relationship, that you want to meet up, right? Then he is, when people, the thing you got to remember is that when people show you who they are, believe them. When people show you who they are through their action or even more importantly, their lack of action. Give me a one if y'all can relate to. Sometimes the biggest action somebody makes is not taking action. Sometimes the most powerful statement somebody makes is not doing something. And in this situation, Carol, uh, the fact that he's on the other side of the country from you is no excuse, right? If he wanted to see you, he would, right? Uh, Carol says her, her guy is on, is on the opposite side of the world and it sounds like they, uh, they find time, they create the time. If he wanted to be with you, uh, he would create the time and the space to, to meet you somewhere in some in some capacity. Okay, so uh, super 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 important for you to for you to take a look at that and for you to for you to connect with. You are worthy of being in relationship with a man who honors you and values you enough to uh, create the time and the space to meet up with you. Are you with me? Super important uh, to do that. Okay, so uh, work, work Anesh says he always talks about sex and texts only two lines in a day. What should I do? What do you think, y'all? I'm giving this a hard no. <laughs> it's a hard no. It's a hard no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tanya says, I missed the whole video. I am wanting to come back into alignment with my boyfriend after a fight. If there is a, is there a text I can send him? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you've had a fight, you've sort of pulled away from each other, right? And now you're looking to come back together. So how can we do that? What's the best way to do that? The best way to do that is to, uh, I would say, if, if there's anything that you want to apologize for or acknowledge, you know, you're welcome. You're welcome to do that. You're welcome to do that. So you're welcome to be like, Hey, so, you know, I want to, I just wanted to let you know, you know, I, I wish, I wish things hadn't got, I wish things hadn't escalated so much back there. And I'm sorry for doing or saying whatever it is, you know, uh, could we meet up and talk later? Right? So again, acknowledging your part, in the, in the whole thing, and then making an invitation to reconnect. You do not wanna have the whole conversation. This is an important thing. Don't, don't try to reconnect the whole conversation over, uh, over text message. You want, to, you want to use texting right now as a tool to neutralize the pain of the situation and invite uh, a, a face-to-face connection, right? Or at the very least, a call. Or a, or, a, or, a, or a video chat, right? You do not want to uh, start hashing out the details of the whole thing over text message. So this is a very fundamental point. Like, uh, do not have serious, deep conversation over text. This is just fundamental, so fundamental that I'm putting it in all caps and I'm highlighting it here in the broadcast. Do not have serious, deep relationship conversation over text. Don't do it for the love of God. Okay, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's powerful. It's 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 just a good rule of thumb. That goes for fights. That goes for uh, that goes for serious emotional talks. That goes for makeups. That goes for breakups. That goes for getting to know each other. All of these types of all of these types of conversations, you want to get them in person. You want to use texting as a tool to guide someone into direct connection, so you can talk to them that way. Yeah, exactly. Lenore's restating my point beautifully. So, for in your situation, you've had a fight. You're looking to hit the reset button and come back into connection with him. Take ownership of your part. Then ask if he's interested in meeting to talk. See, so you're using texting strategically and and open and intentionally with him. 
Okay, so super, 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 uh, super important. <laughs> Oh, Christy says, I love the video of Matt Schaefer and Mark. I've been watching both of them for the last couple months. They help a lot. That's so sweet, Christy. I'm glad that you uh, enjoy it. All right. So I'll uh, keep putting your questions down in the uh, in the chat, y'all. Or if you're watching, uh, watching the replay, put your comments, put your questions in the comments, and I will uh, go through them and I will check them and answer them later. And if you haven't signed up for Mastery of Connection yet, check it out at the website right down there. Uh, we got masteryofconnection.com. You can sign up for my free final beta of my flagship program. It's a $2,000 program that I am offering for free uh, as a beta tester. If you uh, fill out your application and you meet the criteria, you'll be a beta tester. And we start April 13th. It's going to be a powerful, beautiful experience. So check that out. All right. So Connie has a great, uh, a great question here. Connie asks, how are you, how are you, what if the man you like is not much of a texter and prefers to communicate by phone? Interesting, uh, interesting, Connie. That's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, so, I mean, that's not a problem, right? Is that a problem for you? Uh, I would, I would honestly be grateful. I think a lot of women would be delighted, right, to have a man who prefers phone conversation because so many men are trying to default into uh, texting as often as possible, right? So in this situation, you're uh, giving him a great, it's, it's a great blessing, you know, it's a great blessing to sort of direct him into being, just use texting as a way to set up your next phone call, you know, and use it as a tool to flirt, right? Use it as a tool to send a little flirty message, right? Because some guys sort of like to prime the pump in between phone calls. I think that's a great way. I think it's a great way to use texting uh, sort of strategically with a guy who prefers phone calls because yeah, Lisa has a great point. I used to text novels. I've just learned it just drives men crazy in a bad way. I'm going to make this real big, Lisa, because I, I need to, I need to go ahead and give you a, uh, give you a of, of completely being on board with this, Lisa. When a man sees just a block of text come in from a woman, I can tell you from personal experience, it just creates this, uh, like your, your body, your body tenses up, right? Your body tenses up and you're like, oh God, what is, what is this about, right? Because it's usually either a really vulnerable share or it's a, uh, it's, 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 it's a big, you know, she's upset about something. She's got a huge story to tell you. And now you have to read this massive thing and then you have to find a way to respond to it. And, you know, because she texts you so much, you're, you're feeling a lot of pressure as a man to text her back something equally as deep and profound and whatever. And it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting for men, especially if these men are not, uh, proficient texters or they're not like really into the whole texting process, you want to just avoid it. Like just av don't, don't text man huge blocks. <laughs> Save it for the in-person conversation. Can you do that? Are you with me on that ladies? Please let me know. Give me a one, one. If you are one, <laughs> if you are into this, because this is such a critically uh, important. Oh, wow. Look at that. It made it super small. I don't know how that happened. That's fun. <laughs> so please get, cut us, cut us brothers a break on, uh, on that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. And yeah, one sunny makes a great point. Phone is better. You can hear his voice and hear his emotion. You can. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's an all win. It's a win, 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 win to, to get a man who, you know, wants to talk on the phone and wants to connect with you all the time. So, uh, just know, just know that, just know that. And you'll be, you'll be in a, you'll be in good shape. Now, another big thing I want to address with you, amazing ladies. These are three little points. Oh, they're not, it's not really turning out good. Okay. So we're going to start with one and we're going to add a few more. Okay. <laughs> Keep it short and sweet. Exactly. Okay, so this is an important point. Give equivocal, this plays perfectly into what we just talked about. Give equivocal value in response text, texts, okay? So 
whatever he gives you, whatever he gives you, you want to give that back to him equivocally, right? If he gives you a sweet statement, if he gives you a little degree of vulnerability, you want to reinforce that by, by giving him back. So if he says, oh, I was thinking about you, right? That's a sweet thing. That's a vulnerable thing. You want to respond by acknowledging him. Oh, that's so sweet, right? Smiley face. And then if it was, if it's true, be like, I was thinking about you too. Or you could say something cute where it's like, well, well now I, now I, I guess that's contagious because now I'm thinking about you with a little winky face, right? So look at that. Look at that. I mean, so just give him a little additional value, nurture and encourage him if he's being uh, flirtatious and vulnerable with you. It'll make a big difference. And if he's, if he's, so don't over, so if he's not giving you a ton of value, you don't want to over give, right? You don't want to over give if he's not giving you a lot. This is an important, this is an important point, right? Uh, you don't want to over give <laughs> to a man if he's not giving you a lot, okay? Because all that's going to do is make him feel like you're pushing, like you're pressing on him because you're trying to get more uh, response, more activation out of him. And it's actually going to like lower your value in his eyes. It might intimidate him a little bit. It might make him pull away a little bit. Okay. So it's just something to be conscious of. You want to meet his uh, value. But the op opposite side of this is just as true. And it's super important to acknowledge here. The opposite side of this is you do not want to undervalue or be aloof either okay so if he is you don't want to be like deliberately hiding the ball and not giving him you know any sort of value or any sort of vulnerability if he's giving you value meet him where he's at if he's giving you a little intimacy if he's giving you a little playfulness if he's giving you a little flirtiness give that back to him right get reinforce it dance with him like texting especially as you're getting to know somebody and it's a little further down the road it is a dance and dancing depends on what both partners moving together right in a fun uh, dynamic way in a connected way right but if you're if you're waiting like if he texts you you know pretty promptly back and then you wait three four hours, uh, to text him back, you're delaying the response, you're texting him back two, three words or like one sentence after he texts you like a thoughtful response. I can tell you from personal experience when a woman does that, it turns me off big time because I am very thoughtful. I'm very thoughtful in my communication, right? I'm, especially if I like a woman, I put time and energy into thinking about what do I want to say to this person, right? How do I want to, what do I want to share with them, you know? And so my texts are thoughtful. And so if I, if I make a nice, thoughtful statement to them on a dating app or in text message, and then they give me like nothing back, <laughs> you know, uh, it just sucks. And it just feels so sort of like emasculating and gamey. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't got time for this, right? Like there's a sort of like, it's almost like a sort of rejection uh, to a man. Uh, <laughs> Laura says, I want to dance with you, Matt. Oh, that's so sweet, Laura. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> uh, Brenda says, uh, I sent a picture of my legs in the bubbles. Wow. That's 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 gonna escalate. That's gonna that's gonna take the heat up <laughs> big time. And again, like those pictures, I get a picture like that from a girl that I'm seeing or a girl that I'm dating, and that gets me, you know, that'll that'll really get a man turned on. It'll really get him excited. And if you're looking to prime the pump or a meetup later on, or you're looking to have some fun and just sort of play with them, just, I'm telling you, like there's there's no harm in doing that, right? Just, just you know, pu PSA, public service announcement, right? If you send a man uh, illicit pictures in text messages, if you send a man naked pictures, if you send him news, if you send him whatever stuff, just know like those are now his forever and if he ever decides, like you have no more control over that picture, right? So you can make an assumption and not necessarily that he's going to do it, but that at any time he could show people in his life. He could show his friends, you know, he's going to, if you tell him to delete them, like there's no guarantee that he's going to ever do that. Okay. So don't assume that he's ever going to do that. And uh, just be, be okay with the fact that that picture of you is now floating around out in the world forever. And that's just the reality of what's happening. <laughs> uh, Jenna is asking, 
Uh, oh, can we clone more of you? Oh, I love that, ladies. Keep, I just keep, keep loving me up. I appreciate it. You'll be, a, you'll have plenty of time to do that in Mastery of Connection. We'll have plenty of time to, uh, to hang out and talk and have, uh, great, great conversations in, uh, in my course. So if you haven't signed up yet, check it out, y'all. Mastery of Connection. Uh, we start in less than two weeks, so you don't want to miss this amazing opportunity to be a part of uh, to be a part of our tribe. <laughs> so, uh, Salsera has a great question. Ooh, that one that one came out big. Uh, how do you play in the middle between pushy and aloof, especially when he is infrequent in communication with texting? Okay, so Salsera, my follow up question for you is. Uh, is the is his frequency a problem for you? Would you like to text with him more? Okay, that's an important first step in in asking this question, right? Because uh, if he if you want him to text you more, right, it's okay for you to make a playful invitation for him. Okay, it's okay for you to make a playful invitation for him to. Uh, to, 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 to make an offer. Like you can basically be like, Hey, so getting a text from you always brightens up my days and I love having bright days. So is there any way, you know, could you, is there any way we could text a little more often? I love hearing from you right there. You see, you see what you're doing. You're acknowledging him and you're making a playful invitation, guiding him and inviting him into an action that you want. You see what I'm saying? So, so this is so that's that's a way to sort of you're not being pushy, right? You're being vulnerable and you're being playful and you're making a powerful invitation. See, so this is a great way for you to uh, for you to for you to sort of like ride that ride that line. You just always want to you always want to be asking yourself, you know, like how am I being in, how how am I being intentional? Like what is the intention behind what it is that I'm trying to say? And how would a man, you know, respond to this? Right? Am I coming to him as a partner or am I coming to him as like a combatant? Or am I coming to him from like a maternal space or an upset space? Like the energy behind your message and the energy behind your request is at least as important as the words itself. Can you feel me there? This is so, so, so important. Uh, and Sarita has a great question or a great statement. We teach men how to treat us. We do. That's what a relationship is, y'all. And welcome to everybody joining us. I love seeing more people join on. We're up to 140 people watching live. Uh, welcome to the show, y'all. If you're uh, new, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. And let me know any questions you have around texting men. That's the subject of today's show. And be sure if you haven't yet to sign up for Master Your Connection, my flagship course. I'm doing one more free beta launch test. So you can take my $2,000 course, my $2,000 course for, uh, for free, for no charge as a beta tester. This is the last time I'm doing this live. And we're going to cover all sorts of aspects of how you connect with yourself and other people. It's an incredible opportunity. And uh, we have lots of students that are here in this, uh, in this, in this chat that have been a part of the course that uh, have had a wonderful experience. So thousands of women around the world have already done this. It's a wonderful time. Uh, and it's just a great point, Sarita. We teach men how to treat us. We do. So are you connected and are you asking like, based upon how you're showing up, you're demonstrating to him, you're, tr you're telling him how you want what sort of energy you want back. So be super conscious of the energy that you're bringing into relationship, that you're bringing into connected communication with him because you are the conductor, okay? Uh, Jenna C says, million dollar idea for me. What is it? What is it, Jenna? Did I, did I miss the million dollar idea? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Jenna is saying, I vote a men's course and then Matt can... <laughs> Oh, that's what it was. And then Mac can help more men be like him. Oh, Jenna, you're too sweet. Yeah, I wish I wish that more men wanted to learn. <laughs> I wish that more men wanted to do this work and grow and uh and and, and do stuff. I think that'd be I think it'd be fantastic. Oh, oh so Jen, Carol is saying Jenna can have the men's course. Yeah, so there you go, Jenna. You can have the men's course. I'll have the women's course. And then at the end. We'll join everybody together. <laughs> That's fantastic. Ah, Metal Bar says, hello from Chile. Love your videos. First time seeing you live. So happy to have you, Metal Bear. Metal Bear. <laughs> Wonderful to have you. Okay. 
Uh, Mindy has an interesting question here. Nice picture, Mindy, by the way. You on the you on the, the cow. That's fantastic. Is there a qualitative difference between him Facebook messaging versus messenger, no phone number, Facebook friend, versus text messaging has your phone number? I find, and this is a personal thing, phone number, like actually texting through phone, that's a much higher degree of trust. Because at that point, like your phone number is a pretty personal thing. So if I feel comfortable enough to share with somebody my phone number, it means that I've already decided that there is a degree of trust that I've established with them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so like I want you to, I think, I think it's, a, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a different thing. I think it's a different, I think it's a different level of connection and communication. I think it's more intimate when you're texting over the, uh, when you're texting over the phone. Facebook messaging is a little bit, it's like another degree separated out there. You see what I'm saying? Uh, definitely, definitely a little different. Okay, so Ricky says, Matt, you brought so much valuable info to me in the last few months. Oh, that's so sweet, Ricky. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. I love that. Uh, I love that my stuff resonates with you. And please keep sending me comments. Keep engaging. Keep posting. And, and Ricky, if you haven't joined Mastery of Connection yet, feel free to come along. Head on over to MasteryConnection.com. My flagship course is starting in two weeks. What's up? It's going to be a month-long video course. It's going to be a great, uh, a great time. Boom. So let's see. So any other questions before we wrap this up? <laughs> Lenora says, OMG, I learned that from you, Matt. So important, the energy behind the words. Yeah, it's, it's it. I'm telling you, men are responding to your energy much more so than they are the words coming out of your mouth. They are picking up on your energy and they are reacting to it involuntarily. Okay? I want you to know that deeply deeply right men are responding to your energy and they're not they're not responding responding Im implies that they're like practicing emotional intelligence most men are not <laughs> most men are just reacting right to whatever energy they're picking up from you and if your energy is aggressive or confrontive or coming from a fearful space or anything like that it, it, it's going to activate their mama trauma a lot of times it's going to activate their womb or their wound around their mother and they are going to pull back they're going to be shut down on you. It's not going to be pretty, okay? Uh, you don't want to be seen as somebody's mama, okay? <laughs> so just, just know that, y'all. Know that. And uh, let's see. So so yeah, so I hope that this all resonated with y'all. Mm. And I hope that you've got a new... Uh, I'd love for you to share your biggest takeaway down in the box. We talked a lot about the intentionality of texting, how powerful that is. I want you to look at yourself as the conductor of the emotional and communic communicative aspects of the relationship. And I want you to think of texting as one way that you are guiding and inviting a man into, uh, into relationship with you, right? So just to review what sort of we talked about today, uh, texting in the early stages of dating serves a couple powerful functions. Texting is a tool. Texting is a tool in the early stages of dating that you use for, for specific, specific functions, right? Well, the most important thing is logistics. Is logistics, right? It's to plan dates. Texting should be a tool to plan dates. You should not be getting to know him over text. The other great thing that you want to use texting for in the early stages of dating is flirting. Flirting with him, being playful, activating him. I want you to think of it like notes passed around the playground. Okay, like it can be fun and playful and activating. And that's what you want to use texting for in the early stages of dating, especially like if you're getting to know him during quarantine, right? Like we're all in this, uh, we're all in this pandemic, right? <laughs> so super, super, super powerful. Uh, Lenore, <laughs> Lenore says, join Mastery of Connection. Boom. Yeah, Lenore. We'd love to. And Lenore, share a little bit, share a little bit about your experience in Mastery of Connection. I'd love for you to share. I know you said, I know you posted it earlier, but it got lost in the, in the never ending <laughs> text thread. So if you want to share again, I'd love to throw it up and you can, Lenore, Lenore, Lenore has gone through all my courses and she's a, a complete rock star student. Uh, I love Lenore. Okay. So, uh, Karen says, how can you keep the love alive? as you progress? It's a great question, Karen. And I mean, honestly, you can keep the love alive by continuing to practice radical vulnerability, honesty, 
uh, being truthful with him, keeping it light, keeping it playful. Like you want to keep dating your partner no matter how long you have been with him. Can you feel me on this one? It's super important that no matter how long you've been with somebody, that you continue to court him and date him and 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 get to know him at deeper levels, right? And play with him. Men never get tired of playing. Every man has a play drive, okay, that you activate through the way that you talk to him, through how sarcastic you are. I mean, there's so many ways to do it and I've got plenty of videos on it. So uh, I have a video on Play Drive, a couple of them, right? So super, super, super powerful uh, stuff. Izzy LaCambra, oh, thank you for sharing this. Appreciate that, my dear. <laughs> Lulu has an interesting point. Uh, oh, this is, this, is, this is relevant, this is relevant. So I do wanna, I do wanna address this. Uh, somebody, a guy she's dating, keeps on sending negative messages, uh, dark stuff around coronavirus. Okay. So it's, 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 it's important, right? Because a lot of people have a lot of fear right now, and it's very easy to create a sort of fear spiral when you're talking to somebody and getting to know somebody. And so it's going to be very important if you want, if you, if that's not what you want from this man, like if you're looking to sort of get him to pull back, uh, you get to let him know, Hey, so, you know, I and always, you always want to start off with acknowledgement, right? So you can acknowledge and be like, "Hey, I I, I understand that you're uh, that you that you're feeling some that you're feeling some fear, and that you you know you've got a lot preoccupied or wrapped up in this in this pandemic, and I get that and I respect that, you know. But like, and then you get to let him know it's important for me that I focus on, you know, what I can do, what I can do and the positive aspects of this. Like I like to keep, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to maintaining a positive mindset, right? And so I, I really, I need you to honor that for me. Can you honor my commitment to staying positive about this and to focusing on the things that I can change and the things that I can work on? right? Because I don't want to focus on the negative. I don't want to focus on the body count. I don't want to focus on the conspiracy theories. That isn't where I choose to place my focus because my well-being, my emotional health is really important to me, okay? Uh, you, get to, you get to be grounded in that with him. And so just let him know, you know, like it's important to me that I keep my conversations in this space, right? Cause I, this, this is how I'm, a, this is how I'm committed to feeling. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I hope that that landed with you. And I hope that that gives you sort of a basis, you know, grounded in your feelings, as long as you grounded in your feelings and you're, and you're, and you're gentle with it, he's got no choice but to respond, <laughs> right? And honor and honor that. Uh, Karen says, that you founded us as setting the energy, my takeaway. Beautiful, Karen. I'm glad that that was the takeaway. That's a huge one. The way that you show up energetically to a man is more powerful than anything else in determining how he feels about you into how safe he feels about you or not, right? And in order to create vulnerability with a man, you want him to feel as safe as possible with you. Are you with me? Give me a one if you can relate to that. <laughs> Uh, uh, Clarice says, Clarice, I always think of Silence of the Lambs every time I hear the name, Clarice. Uh, if we teach men how to treat us and it was not the right way, how do you get him to unlearn what was taught and reteach him correctly? Woo! That's a big question, Clarice. That's like a whole nother live. <laughs> uh, you get to do that one day at a time, right? So if he did not learn a healthy pattern when it comes to treating women, you know, in past relationships, then it's going to be up to you to be, uh, to be clear. Like, I understand that this is how you've, this is how you've treated women before. Right. But that isn't going to work with me. Right. I'm committed to, you know, having a healthy relationship. This is how I like to feel. This is how I like to be treated. Right. Can you, can you meet me there? Right. Can you, uh, can you, can you, can you respect that? Can you honor that? You see what I'm saying? If you're able to do that, if you're able to, to, to communicate that to him, and then you just give him an invitation, you give him an invitation and see if he can meet you there. Right. And if he can, he can, if he can, he can't. <laughs> and you know, it'll, it'll just become clear over time if he's, uh, if he's able to do that or, or not. All right. So 
I hope that that, uh, I hope that landed with you. Okay, so then, and going, remember, so that was early stage. So I talked a little bit about early stage texting and then in later stage texting, like later stage dating, uh, it's, like a, it's like a dance. You know, you and your partner, it, it can be a way of maintaining connection and going back and forth. If you wanna do a daily chat, that's fine. If you wanna, you know, take time and stay logistical and keep texting kind of aloof, then that's another thing right? It's okay. But just remember, texting can be used to set boundaries. Texting can be used in so many ways without chatting, right? You can use texting as multimedia. One of the greatest ways you can use texting is by sending pictures, sending voice chats, sending memes, sending uh, flirty, flirty texts. Hey, just bought this. How do I look? Winky face you know, and send a picture of you like wearing something cute. That's, that shows a lot of confidence and it shows that you're being flirtatious with him, okay? So there's so many different powerful ways you can use texting as a multimedia way to deepen connection without writing blocks of text. Don't write blocks of text, okay? Do give equivocal value, right? If he's giving you value and intimacy, give him some value and intimacy. Acknowledge and respond and reciprocate, and that will start creating deepening levels of intimacy with him, okay? Are you are you with me on all that? And, and so on top of all this, y'all, if you are looking to transform your relationship with yourself, if you are looking to transform your relationship with other people, create deeper relationships with your friends, your families, your husbands, your boyfriends, potential guys that you're talking to online, be sure to check out Mastery of Connection. Lenore is saying, she, Lenore has a beautiful uh, statement here. Lenore says, it was a life-changing course. You learned so much about yourself, your self-worth, how to flip your limiting beliefs, attachment styles, effective communication, and so much more. That is so sweet. I promise y'all, I did not pay Lenore to be here <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. She is a true blue uh, student of this work and fan. And for that, I give her a round. <laughs> Of applause, <laughs> and uh, had a great, had a great, had a great one. Had a, we had a great time in uh, Mastery of Connection, and we're starting Mastery of Connection again, y'all, on April. 13th. So it was starting in a couple weeks on Monday. This is your last chance to do it for free as a beta tester. This is a $2,000 course that I will be selling for uh, between one to $2,000 starting in a few months. So this is the last time I'm going to be running it as a free course. So if you want to transform your relationships with yourself and other people, get to the bottom of your beliefs, redefine your self-worth, create a vision for your life and your values and all this wonderful stuff, right? Sign up for Mastery Connection at the website masteryofconnection.com. I'm not good with, with pointing at the screen. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to have you all on the show. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, take a sec take a second and hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content. We'd love to have you as part of the tribe and I'm uploading new videos every week. I'm going to get back to doing uh, a lot more recorded uh produced videos next week. I just have, you know, I've been moving in and settling into my next uh, my next chapter of my life here and dealing with, you know, I, I've actually had some adrenal fatigue. I'm on the verge of adrenal, <laughs> adrenal failure actually over here. So I'm in the process of healing and resting and giving myself the time I need to sort of like recover because I had a big year last year. And so for those of you that have been with me on this journey, you know as well as I do how big this year has been. Launched this YouTube channel, built two courses, worked with dozens of one-on-one -on -one clients, over 4,000 students. I pushed myself to the limit. So I'm in the process of healing and recovering so I can continue to create great, amazing content with you for years to come. So that is uh, that is my that is my plan. So Salsera had a great uh, a great takeaway here. My takeaway is being able to show the men in my life and they get to join if we both agree, uh, enjoy each other. I love it, I love it. You get the air horn. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, keep on posting your takeaways, y'all. And for those of you watching on the replay, post your takeaways uh, in, the, uh, in the comments. I would love to have those here as well. Karen says, your advice helped me with a guy in another culture. Just so you know, men are men. They are. We, we have un universal needs, universal fears, right? And so please, Allah, help me, help me help you. <laughs> Connect with men better and have better 
relationships, okay? That is my commitment to each and every one of you. So thank you for stopping by. Uh, check out my course, subscribe to my channel. So much love. This has been an amazing, amazing time. One of my favorite lives ever. Had a blast. Uh, and I will see y'all next week. I think I'm going to do a live every week. So uh, get used to seeing me on a regular basis. Maybe if I'm extra brave, I will uh, set a time, set a time and a date. <laughs> Haven't done it yet, but it's a possibility. So thanks for stopping by. Lots of love to all of you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.